a continuing series of editorials. Subject, are present programs for the aged adequate? Here again, speaking for our program, is Mr. Patrick Paulson, Vice President. One... Oh, <laughs> Today, in America, according to a recent statistic, the average, the average couple living on Social Security receives about $1,500 a year. We think this is a disgrace. Why should they get that much? <laughs> they don't work. They just sit around doing nothing. If they were 50 years younger, they'd be called hippies. <laughs> Personally, we think it's high time we stop kowtowing to that old fogey's lobby. All they do is complain. Picky, picky, picky. <laughs> but I have yet to hear of anyone burning his social security card. <laughs> the more they get, the more they want. Nobody bothers to tell you that right now the oldsters get more than just the $1,500 a year. They are also entitled to $100 a month extra for every child under five. <laughs> but you'd be surprised how few are taking advantage of this. <laughs> now let me make this crystal clear. We have nothing against old folks. As the social workers say, Planes that currently help them doubt with the new originating out of function action necessarily generate a domestic external pattern of purpose. <laughs> keep the flies off them. <laughs> now you take Grandma Paulson. She's 92 years old and no Social Security, but that's fine with us. She's our responsibility and we take care of her. We don't send her away somewhere. We keep her in our backyard. <laughs> out there and, and everything's fine. She's happy and great company for our dog. <laughs> In conclusion, we say it's time to re-examine this whole Social Security program. It all started back in 1932. They said it would take care of our old people. Now we've been paying into it all this time, 35 years. And what good has it done? There are more old people now than when it started. <laughs> We can't be constructive, let's forget it. <laughs> Thank you and good night. Should the use of firearms be restricted? Once again, speaking for our program, Mr. Patrick Paulson, Vice President. Many people today are suggesting that restrictions be placed on the purchase and ownership of firearms. No one questions that these are good, solid citizens, which combines the spirits. But they are grossly misguided trolls, or else they can't be magic for lunch or communists. <laughs> but we respect them. <laughs> and we will fight to the death against their right to express their opinions. <laughs> First, let us, <laughs> let us define our terms. We are merely talking about simple firearms, pistols, rifles, bazookas. <laughs> so let us not depart it for all flare off. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> I ask you, what is our most cherished right since pioneer days? The right for every man, woman, and child to carry a gun. <laughs> This is not a statement of creation, but has man the meanings that even a child can understand. If you're old enough to get arrested, you're old enough to carry a gun. <laughs> a gun is a necessity. Who knows, if you're walking down a street, you'll spot a moose. <laughs> I feel these restrictions are plot and sporadic turn for listing. 
We at the Smothers Brothers program consider this personal attack on our own integrity. Personally, I myself carry a gun. Should I be restricted from carrying a gun? Do I look unstable? Let us not be led mass by those who had less met us. <laughs> Let no man take away our liberties. <laughs> Stand up and be counted. Let's preserve our freedom to kill. If you wish a copy of the preceding editorial, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Editorial, Box 1763, Beverly Hills. Oh, 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 California. Oh. Present another in our continuing series of editorials. Should the fees doctors charge be regulated by law? And here he is speaking for our program is Mr. Patrick Paulson, Vice President. Of late, more and more people are expressing the view that doctors are charging too much for their services. Now the complaints of exorbitant fees come without almost exception from those who have been going to doctors. <laughs> I say these people are sick. <laughs> and why listen to them? If you want to get a true picture, there's an old saying, if you have two guys, scales, and gorges, and fredges, you'll not have an inaccuracy parts, but several will be sliding in. <laughs> in other words, a horse with a broken leg never asked to be shot. <laughs> now, if a surgeon socks it to you, remember their long years of training. Eight years in medical school, ten years for the dumber ones. <laughs> And don't forget a surgeon has his expenses too. Secretary, fancy office. And what about the payoff to the guy who really does the operating? <laughs> Put yourself in the place of doctors of today. They have big cars, a mansion with a swimming pool, maids, butlers. Do you think it's easy leaving all of this every morning to work with sick people? <laughs> in conclusion, let's take the case of one patient. A Mr. J.P. Henderson. May he rest in peace. <laughs> no, better yet, take my own case. I was recently in an automobile accident, going off on an on-ramp. <laughs> I was on the operating table 57 minutes, yet the fee was only $1,300. And they didn't charge me a cent for the horn they left in me. <laughs> Naturally, it's a lot of fun at parties. But it sure louses up my love life. <laughs> sake. Thank you and please keep well. Good night. Mr. Chairman, members of the assembly, my friends, fellow countrymen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Governor Reagan, <laughs> loyal party members, youth of our nation. Citizens of the Republic, <laughs> workers of the world. <coughs> Beloved gathering, my good neighbors, brothers and sisters. Esteemed members, <laughs> official delegates, delegated officials, honored brethren, fellow Americans. At this time, I would like to say that my allotted time has run out. 